let's look at logarithmic functions. Now, here's something to remember. We already said that exponential functions are one to one, right? Didn't we say that? Yeah. And if they're one to one, then what does that mean? Oh, how quickly we forget. If they're one to if you have a one to one function, that means there's an inverse. That means exponentials have inverses. <laughs> I know we're so excited, right? <laughs> Now, this is, what the, uh, this is what the inverse looks like. Just don't freak out on me. Just try not to. This is what the inverse function looks like. This is called the, this is a, a logarithmic expression. Logarithms are the inverses for exponentials. You have to understand how exponentials and exponents work to understand how logarithms work. Now, when you see this, we have to make sure we understand the connection here. This means that a to the y power equals x. OK, this goes back and forth in terms of the meaning here. You guys remember what your exponential guy looked like? Remember that your exponential function was something that was along the lines of y equals some base, and the exponent was your variable, right? Isn't that what we saw before? Mm -hmm. But since I said we're talking about inverses, and we know how to get the inverse, don't we swap the y for x and the x for y? When we do that, we come up with this guy. So we're going to be working these guys backwards. So that's the inverse of? The exponential, yeah. This is the inverse of the exponential. But we write it like this when you have it solved for y. This is the notation that was developed to talk about the inverse for an exponential, logarithmic function. Now, before we can talk about what the graphs look like, I just want to run through a few examples for you. I have some examples of equations that we would solve here. If I say log so the base 4 of 8 is equal to x. So this a right here is still going to be considered to be your base. So log of the base 4 of 8 is equal to x. I'm going to show you how to solve something like this. The way we solve this is to get it out of this logarithmic form and put it back in this exponential form. So what should we have here? The base is right here, so 4 to the x, right, is equal to 8. Now, this is the way my mind works to get it right. The, I, I call this guy the base, right? For the logarithmic function, this is the base. That means in the exponential expression, he's also the base, right? I just have to figure out what is his exponent. His exponent is the answer of the log. And what I do, I call, do what's called loopy loop. Maybe this was something that was oh, deemed <coughs> a loopy loop. Mm -hmm. it, it yes, it, uh, this also may be something that's being phased out along with um, yeah, cat's meow and what was the other word I said? Uh, Hogwash? Trousers. trousers. <laughs> Raise 4 to the x power, and then that equals 8. So a little loopy loop. That's what I do. 4 to the x equals 8. Do you know how to solve this guy? You should, because we just did things like this, right? Mm -hmm. What's the common base for these? Mm -hmm. Two. <laughs> That's me Two. Two. being Doug, being somebody else. Mm -hmm. So that means this is 2 squared to the x equals 2 to the third, right? Really, we know what this means, right? 2x equals 3, so x equals 3 halves. Think about how that's going to make sense. 4 to the 3 halves equals 8, right? If it's 4 to the 3 halves, the exponent is a half, 
What does an exponent of a half mean? <laughs> Remember the denominator, it's the index. So if I actually look at 4 to the 3 halves, that means the square root of 4 to the third. Doesn't that give you 8? It all works out so splendidly. Uh, let's try this one then. Log with base x of 125 equals 3. For us to figure out what this is going to be, how we, how we find x, we rewrite using this, uh, rewrite using exponents, rewrite in exponential form. So did you get the, did you do the loopy loop on that, Doug? I did the loopy loop. So that means x to the third equals 125. We should be able to look at this and solve at this and say x equals, that's the only real solution for this guy x to the third equals 125, x equals 5. Do you all agree? No. All right. How do you put that into a calculator? That's a very good, that's a very good question. You, you, you can put this into your calculator, but you have to first talk about the change of base theorem, which is not ha hasn't happened yet. It's actually very easy, and it's even easier to graph if you use one plot. Just saying. I have log with base 27 of x is equal to 4 thirds. How am I going to rewrite this guy? Well, first, let's say 27 to the 4 thirds power equals x. How did you get that? Well, using that technical term, we do the loopy loop, right? 27 to that power equals x. Can you work this guy out? As Doug was saying, that's the cube root of 27 raised to the 4th power equals x. Well, you know what I have, don't you? I got my list of powers here, right? What's the cube root of 27? Three. And then three to the fourth, I move over here. Three to the fourth is 81. Sweet. Sure, I'm glad that I made my list of powers. You don't need the list of powers in your test because you have them memorized. Just to show you what you're supposed to have. You know, let's not go there. So what do you think about solving these guys? That's not too bad, is it? No. You still have to know how to work with exponents. So if you've forgotten how to work with rational exponents, you go back and you review that.